attention to the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 6 and verse number 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt worship, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Mark chapter 12 and verse number 28. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus, tell me what is the first, the greatest of all the commandments. Tell me, Jesus, where would I get started if I wanted to live for you? Where would I start? And Jesus answering him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Today, for a few moments, I want to minister to you on this subject, one God, one God. You may be seated in Jesus' name today. Now I want you to know that the subject of one God is the treasure chest that houses all the other gifts from God. Now, you ask me today why I'm so stirred or why I'm so moved on the subject of one God. It is that reason. The one God is a treasure chest. Understand the one God. You open up the treasure chest of other great gifts from this God. In Deuteronomy 6 and 4, Moses told that the daily diet of the Jews would be to hear every morning, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thousands, a few thousand of years later, Jesus is asked by some men, would you tell us what is the greatest commandment of all? The first and the greatest. He said, it is. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. There is no disputing the one God doctrine. Throughout the Bible, thousands of times, over 7,000 times to be exact, the Bible refers to God as being one God, one Lord. Malachi, in Malachi chapter 2 and verse number 10, Malachi, one of many, says, Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? So Malachi bears out the fact that there is one God. Moses bears out the fact that there is one God. Jesus verifies the word by saying it is the greatest of all commandments. But how do we understand? Because the doctrine of one God is truly the cornerstone of Christianity. You have got to understand one God in order for other treasures to open up. And so Jesus gives the definition in John chapter 4 and verse number 24. Jesus says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse number 17. Now unto the king eternal immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be glory, be honor, 
and glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said that God is a spirit. Paul said that God is an invisible spirit. God fills all. God fills all space and all time. Jesus going back to John. In John chapter 1 and verse number 18. Jesus says, No man hath seen God at any time. The only, the only begotten of the Father, which is in the bosom of the Father. The only begotten Son, excuse me. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. He hath declared Him. Jesus said that God is a spirit. Paul said that God is an invisible spirit. And Jesus says that no man hath seen God at any time. No man hath seen God at any time. Because God is a spirit. 1 John, 1 John, not the Gospel of John, but the first epistle of John. Chapter number 4 and verse number 12. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is, per is perfected in us. Now, John says that no man has seen God, but yet if we love one another, that we have manifested God. So in other words, for God to be seen by man, there must be a manifestation of that God. In 1 Timothy, and I just believe that as I am teaching the oneness of God, that it is noteworthy that I am staying with the Scripture. Note that. I am staying in the confines of the Scripture. I am not using the word mystery. I am not using the words first, second, and third person. Because nowhere in the lids of the Holy Bible Wherever the terms used, please congregation, please audience today, beware of man-made addendums to the Word of God. Nowhere in the Bible is there first, second, second, first person, second person, third person of the Godhead. There is one God, and it is the greatest of all the commandments. It is the treasure chest of which... Thank you, Jesus. Brings all the other gifts. God is invisible. God, God is an invisible spirit. In other words, for God to be seen, God must manifest Himself. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 16. A lot of people refer to God and the Godhead as a mystery. But Paul says in 1 Timothy 3.16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Can I tell you, the dispute over who God is has already been settled. It didn't need a fourth century gathering together of philosophy and religious men. It has already been settled. Deuteronomy said he's one God. Jesus said that's the greatest commandment of all. Why can't we accept the fact today that there is one God? And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. This is talking about Jesus Christ. Now if there's one God, if there's one God, and this one God is spirit, and this one God cannot be seen with man's eye, but this one God manifests himself, and the man, Christ Jesus, is born, then we must conclude that this man, Christ Jesus, is the eternal, invisible God manifested in human flesh. Don't have to get together and dissect him. Don't have to make a God out of flesh. Don't have to make a separate person out of him. They understood it. That's why the word Trinity 
First, second, and third persons are not used in the Word of God. It is, it is unknown. It was unknown until the 4th century when men, philosophers and religious men, began to not be satisfied with the Holy Writ and they became, they began, they began, be, began to make their own definition of one. They said one is three. I will tell you, there are three what's, but not three who's. There is three. I'm excited about God, and I'm excited about this message because in weeks to come, we're going to open up the lid of one God, and we're going to reach down and see the treasure of His name. And we're going to reach down and see the treasure of being baptized with the Holy Ghost. And we're going to reach down and get the treasures out. Manifested. Well, how was God, how was God manifest in the flesh? The Bible says the angel spoke to Joseph in Matthew 1:23. The angel said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Deuteronomy said there's one God. Jesus said that was the greatest of all commandments. And if the one God, if Jesus is God with us, then Jesus is that one God. Amen? In Colossians, in Colossians chapter 1, <clears throat> And verse number 12. Again, please pay special note. We are staying with the Scriptures. Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Who are we talking about? Jesus. The reason that God became man was that God needed a body to shed some perfect blood to redeem an imperfect world. So God created a body through the miraculous conception with Mary. God overshadowed Mary. And from that divine overshadowing, the Son, S-O-N, flesh of God, deity. So now we have in Jesus Christ the blending together of humanity and deity. It is the same one God. They were one God people in the Old Testament. The Jews were one God worshipers. Jesus Christ is the Jehovah of the Old Testament who has come to live in flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Who is Jesus? Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether there be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. It pleased God that in the man Christ Jesus all the fullness of the Godhead should dwell. Colossians 2 and verse number 6. Colossians 2 and 6. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk ye in Him. Why are we going to change Him? Why do we want to modify Him? If He was one God in New Testament and Old Testament, why do we want to get to the 4th century and cause Him to be three? Why do we want to change Him? As you have received Him, there is how you should walk in Him. He said, as you have received Him, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, 
as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. What would the world try to take away from us? What philosophy was Paul trying to tell us to stay away from? What was philosophy attacking? Philosophy was attacking the one God. The enemy knew if I'm going to keep people out of the treasures chest of God I've got to mess up the Godhead I've got to get people thinking there's three separate beings in the Godhead what is he saying oh I feel the Lord here today please take note that I'm staying in the scripture what are you telling me Paul to beware what are you telling us Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost to beware of what, what philosophy what deceit what tradition here it is in verse 9 for in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily Jesus is not in the Godhead hear me now Jesus is not the second person in the Godhead the Godhead is in Jesus all the fullness of the Godhead is in him notice huh. notice have I made mention today that I'm staying in the Scripture? Notice in John 14 and verse number 6. John 14, verse number 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth or satisfies us. Philip said, you telling me we've seen the Father? You're telling us that we've seen him? Jesus, would you please show me the Father? Je would you please show us? Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And let me, let me stop right there and say something. If there was ever a good place for Jesus to use the terms first, second, and third person, right here's a lot of good places. They're unknown to Jesus. They're not mentioned by Jesus. Show us the Father. But he said, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How sayest thou then show us the Father believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me the words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself but the Father that dwelleth in me he doeth the works can I tell you that Jesus stood there as a man and he said God the Father dwells inside of me if you've seen what I'm doing you've seen the Father I've raised the dead I've healed the sick I've, I've done miracles that's what the Father does and in case you need more help John 10 30 John 10 30 Jesus plainly makes this statement I and my father are one One God is a fact. There are three manifestations of one God. This is how easy it is to understand it. There are not three persons in the Godhead. There are manifestations of one God. There is a Father. There is a Son. There is a Holy Ghost. These are manifestations of one God. Just as I am a son, a husband, a father, and a pastor, there's only one Kenneth Carpenter. Don't write a book about me 400 years from right now and have Kenny the son, Kenny the preacher, Kenny the husband, number one, number two, number three, and number four because you have horribly massacred who I am.
God is the Father of all creation. God created the world and all that therein is, thus making God the Father of creation. John 1 and 10, speaking of Jesus, says He, Jesus, was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. This one God moved on the face of the waters, and this one God spoke, and light shined. Waters gathered together. Animals were created. And then God stepped back after six days, and God became the Father of creation. This same one God saw man steeped in sin. Man just at the gutter of sin. And this one God overshadowed. It doesn't even make good theological doctrine to believe in three persons and call God the Father the first person, the Father of God the Son the second person. When Scripture says... That it was the Holy Ghost that overshadowed Mary. Now, if you, if you believe that there's three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and God the Father is the Father of God the Son, God the first person is the Father of the second person, then how do you have the third person interacting with Mary and giving birth to the second person? That's why they have to say it's a mystery. Because it doesn't make any sense. There's not one, two, three. The same God that created the heavens. The same God that created the earth. That same God came down over Mary. And when that God lifted up himself, he had implanted deity in the womb of humanity. Stand with me today. ha ha Preacher, why are you doing this? Because there's a treasure chest that you have been misled to open. You have been denied the beauty of some treasures. I'm going to be bringing you from weeks to come. Treasures. But i got to get you to understand there's only one God. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. God is holy. God is a spirit. Thus, God is the Holy Ghost. He's the Father of creation. He's the Son of redemption. And He is the Holy Ghost in the church today. He is the Holy Ghost of the church today. John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. He stood there as a man, and he said, I'm going to pray the Father as a man, and he's going to give you another comforter that's going to abide because I'm about to leave. There's another comforter coming. And I, I'm leaving, another comforter's coming. And he said, I will not leave you comfortless. Who's going to come to him? I will come to you. The same deity that created creation, the same deity that caused the conception with Mary, is the same deity that we receive when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Three more scriptures. Three more scriptures. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. John 15, 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. John 16 and 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. That word expedient there 
In the Greek means advantageous to you. It is to your advantage for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. I've got to go. I've got to die on a cross. I've got to shed blood. I've got to tear the veil. I've got to go in and make a way. And when I go in and shed my blood, please let me go, he was saying. Let me go to the cross. Let me shed my blood because I'm going to prepare the way. And when I go and you see me no more as far as the flesh is concerned, I'm going to make the way that you can come into the presence of God. And then the Holy Ghost is going to come. And they knew very well when the wind blew at Pentecost and they received the Holy Ghost. They received the same deity that was in Christ Jesus. That's why they had power to lay their hands on the sick and they recovered. That's why they were changed people because they had received God inside of their spirit. There's only one God. He's the Father of all creation. He's the Son of redemption that hung on a cross and paid the sin debt. And He's the Holy Spirit in the church today. I'm so glad I believe.